What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another preposterous episode of The Center Beacon. Initially, I was going to do this video as a poem, but uh, then I realized that the only poem I'm familiar with is The Man from Nantucket, and it turns out it's actually more of a dirty limerick rather than poetry. So I'm just going to do a regular video. I hope that's okay. We're going to discuss uh, Test Server from this past weekend and... Uh, another new uh, series of weapons. So the last few test servers, if you've been watching my videos, um, they're introducing weapons and basically just kind of seeing like, you know, what has a positive response. They're not necessarily going to introduce these weapons. It depends, I think, on the feedback. And uh, this time around, uh, they finally moved away from all the long range stuff and they moved into some uh, very close range weapons, 100 meter weapons which is kind of crazy in and of itself. Um, and as you'll see in the video, it's uh, surprisingly difficult to get it within 100 meters of seemingly anything when you're using these weapons. But uh, maybe that was just my bad luck or bad playing. But uh, it's it's actually a new, I would consider it a new type of damage because it's, uh, it's energy, but it's not exactly uh, plasma because as you'll see in the video, um, this type of damage penetrates every barrier in the game. It penetrates energy shields, it penetrates uh, physical shields, as well as any cover, up, down, left, right, sideways, you name it. Um, if you're within 100 meters of this thing, uh, you're getting hit, and you're getting hit for the full effect of uh, the damage. So kind of, kind of something different here. You know, everything else has been, up to this point, a variation on something we've already had or already seen. You know, they had the trebs a few weeks ago that were like, you know, hey, now, you know, short and intermediate range trebuchets, essentially. Uh, last weekend, we had the uh, heavy spirals, variation of the spirals. Um, so this weekend, they're trying out uh, what they call like a pulse, pulse prototype. Um, you can see here's the light version. Um, everything is the same. The range is 100 meters. The reload time is five seconds. Um, they just happen to use the Orkin model. It's, it's just a notional model. It's not what it's going to look like. Um, and the light one does 10,000 damage. And the only thing that changes between the three versions, there's a light, medium, and heavy, which I'm going to show you here, uh, is the damage just simply increases a bit for each one. And so, uh, you know, so initially, on one hand, I'm kind of like excited because I'm like, you know, this really kind of changes things with the way that this weapon works. It's gonna add some new wrinkles into, you know, where they to introduce it. It'll add some new wrinkles into uh, like defending and attacking uh, critical beacons, you know, those middle beacons out there, the platform beacons on Yamantau. And I, and I specifically went after footage to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, and we're gonna look at that in a minute. Here you can see the medium one, 15,000 damage. Everything else, same, same. Uh, it just does more damage. It, it increases by 5,000 with each variation. Um, so, you know, I'm like, on one hand, I'm kind of intrigued, but then on the other hand, I'm kind of like, man, there is, if you're within 100 meters, there's no getting away from it. You're getting popped. So um, it, it does add an interesting wrinkle to, like I said, the, the attacking and defending of, you know, strategically important beacons. Uh, maps like uh, Shinzen, which I'm going to show you later with lots of buildings, lots of cover. You know, you kind of do the dance, like who's going to pop out first. Well, with this thing, like nobody's got to pop out. You just keep like, you know, basically putting licks on each other with this thing because it goes right through the building, right through the cover and right through the bot. So overall, I, I found the damage. It's not overpowering. It's not a lot. Here you can see I've got it tricked out uh, Lancelot. And the top one's the heavy, it does 20k damage per hit. The side ones are mediums, they do 15,000. So this, uh, if my math is right, it gives you about 30, 000, uh, 50,000 damage in one shot. Now you're gonna see here, the reason I'm showing you this video, I had no help uh, off to the right behind me. You, you can't really see it, but uh, it, it's a couple of idiots basically playing uh, you know, uh, lawn darts with zenits. They had butches loaded up with like quadruple zenits. I'm trying to make it up the ramp, but you can see the guy below me, I think, is driving the same thing I am. And he pops me like three or four times. You can see that health diminish by 50,000 even uh, every five seconds. So, you know, I can barely get up the ramp. I've got no bot left. Then uh, I don't get to capture the beacon, and I'm eating uh, hydras to finish me off. 
So uh, with this clip as well, I'm just kind of giving you an idea of how the dynamic could change in fighting for some of these critical beacons, particularly this one on Yemen Tau because it's unique, it's elevated. So, you know, I'm, I'm barely surviving this onslaught from uh, this, this uh, Jesse up here. Um, or maybe that was a doc. That was a doc. And then, of course, he's got Trident backups over there. But you can see I finally get in range, and I'm able to zap the dude uh, with 40,000 damage. He can't get away. You can't dodge it. Um, so then I just kind of run back over here, and I want to look to finish this guy off because he kind of got in, uh, in behind me there. And the rest of this clip is just going to kind of show you notionally what you could be facing were this to go live, you could park a dude with a good team. You know, if you actually had, which I did not have here, clearly. But if you had a good team, and uh, obviously they, they have the beacon right now, but say they didn't, say we had it, and you could sit here and have a couple of these things equipped, and you could really zap guys as they come up uh, on top of the platform, and there's really nothing they could do about it in the position that I'm in. Now, obviously, you're going to see here in a second... These guys are going to do a nice job of flanking me uh, very evenly. They're going to kind of, they're pressuring me from one side, then that guy pressures me from that side, and I just kind of bounce back and forth. Now, if I had decent teammates, instead of guys playing a bunch of games over there uh, with Zenits, then this could be an advantageous spot, especially if you park like a big bot with lots of weapon slots, like say like a Leo or something, uh, or that Lance I had earlier. And as guys come up on that top of that platform, the damage is distributed in a, in a hemispherical shape. It goes out and up. You saw that like big, those big bursts right there. If you're within that hemisphere, you're getting popped for the full dose of damage. So it's kind of interesting. So even stuff above you isn't safe. Um, now in this one, what I did is I set up, I, I was not liking uh, what I normally prefer with this game, it, what I call a synergistic setup, where you kind of run the similar type of weapon, similar type of damage, similar type of range, similar type of reload. You know, like if I had two magnums on this guy. So I find or I feel that this weapon, if uh, they in, in, indeed introduce it, I feel like it really lends itself to a hybrid setup. Because, uh, obviously, I'm only showing you a few clips here, but I played uh, a ton of games, and it was really difficult to get into 100 meters of anything um, with uh, an, an entire, you know, uh, setup of this particular weapon. Now, you can see, because, like, right here, I don't want to get anywhere near that dude. That's 60,000 damage, potentially, if I closed within 100 meters of that guy. But I've got the Terran on there, so I can kind of work him down. You see I drew him from going into the alley, and then I zap him and finish him off with uh, my two uh, light prototypes. So I kind of started running the hybrid setups and I found like a little more success with this particular setup. I can pressure with the, with the Terrans. I got a little bit of range to stay out of, uh, of their range if they're running uh, this new weapon. And then when you get in close, it's an instant zap. And you know I, I feel like players may find it uh, an attractive choice because it recycles so quickly. Um, which I actually suggest that perhaps they increase the reload time, maybe eight seconds, something like that in my feedback uh, to Pixonic, just so it doesn't become like a zap happy fest of silliness with these things just going off every five seconds. It, it adds up very quickly. Uh, smooth move uh, by me there to uh, eat the, uh, the double trebs, but uh, you know, that's what I do. Uh, I sacrifice myself to uh, provide this kind of uh, great uh, behind the scenes footage for you guys. But here you can see a little more of that interplay, like, hey, I'm going to put a building in between us. He's zapping me. I'm going to zap him. Um, but the uh, the hybrid setup, I felt like, would be the way to go with this thing. Um, there was just too many instances on test server where I just couldn't close, and I had nothing to reach out. And it, a lot of guys, of course, you know, as always, they run, like, very traditional... Uh, setups that are known to be awesome, like, you know, plasma lances, splash lances, you know, trident furies, yada, yada. And if you're running something that only goes 100 meters, you, you can't get anywhere near them, especially without coordinated team play. So I was liking the hybrid setup, and, uh, you know, I just, I think it's really going to, if they do introduce it, it'll add an interesting dynamic to uh, maps like this, like Shinzen, uh, Canyon, particularly in Yam and Tau, again, with like those uh, very interesting elevated uh, center beacons, the Yam and Tau one and the one on Canyon, how you kind of get into that like uh, back and forth where there's like half the, you know, blue teams on one side of the beacon platform and, you know, half the red teams on the other. 
with these things, you're not going to be able to just sit back there and wait for somebody to come around the corner. If a, if a coordinated team, you know, has a player that equips a bot sensibly with these things, you know, he's going to be able to roll in there and he's just going to zap damage every five seconds, whatever it is, if they lengthen it a little bit. Um, and you're not going to be able to get away from it. So, you know, something to consider, um, you know, w with this particular type of weapon. So I, I kind of recommended that they be, you know, careful with this uh, because it is a new type of damage. I mean, it's not really plasma. Plasma is defeated by physical shields. You know, you, you can't shoot through physical shields. You can't shoot through buildings. This thing goes right through. As you can see there, I zap him, you know, with both of those, uh, those light uh, prototypes. And then I would kind of wait for him to come out, and I get him with the organs. Now, right here, again, I should just stay here and keep zapping him, because he doesn't have anything that can zap me. But, you know, I'm kind of used to playing, like, you know, aggressively, and you got the rhino, and you want to get out there and dish out damage. But uh, you can kind of see how that's going to play out on live, where that little dance of death that we get into behind cover on the opposite sides of walls or buildings... It's, uh, it's going to change dramatically were they to introduce this. I felt like the damage was okay... It's, it's not overwhelming, but it will add up quickly, uh, hence my suggestion of lengthening the reload time. Eight seconds, ten seconds, I don't know. I felt like five seconds, you saw that footage of me going up the ramp there, five seconds was like, it was like boom, 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 and then you got like no bot left. So um, that's about the size of this video here. Just wanted to give you guys a good look at that. Uh, I appreciate you guys liking and subscribing and commenting on all my videos, so please keep that up. And as always, I will see you next time at the Center Beacon.